Hola, buenos dias. Good morning, my beautiful people. Welcome back to the channel. It's your girl here, Daniela, Miss Four Lizard. And thank you so much for stopping by and joining me for another planner and productivity video. It's Saturday morning. I'm feeling good. I'm so happy it's the weekend. I had a really good night's sleep and I'm feeling rested and rejuvenated and I hope you are too. But today I have a bit of a different video. Um, I want to tell you about how I converted my garden happy planner from a vertical, a regular vertical style to what I call a rolling monthly format. So basically I was using an undated vertical planner for my gardening planner. So it looked something like this. And I felt like this was too much space for me for you know how I'm gardening right now and what my gardening situation is. I felt like having all three boxes like this for a day was just a little bit too much space for me. And so I came upon this idea of changing it to be what I call a rolling monthly. So I made each box its own day so i have three weeks basically on this page right now and so it's kind of like a happy medium between just having a monthly calendar page um and having the weekly pages and i feel like i've hit the sweet spot because right now like having this longer box is like perfect for me for what i want to do and um because like just having the monthly box would be i feel a little bit too little of space but having like this entire row for one day is a little bit too much so this rolling monthly i feel is re is really um doing it for me and i feel inspired i feel uh, motivated to be in my planner and so i'm just really happy with how this turned out so if you're interested in seeing my process behind it, how I came up with this idea and how I use it. Just keep on watching. All right, so just to take a couple of steps back, let me tell you a little bit about this Gardening Happy Planner and how my journey with gardening and, you know, why I decided to change the format up. So basically, last year I had a skinny happy planner for my gardening planner and it was amazing i actually the year before that um, or earlier in the year i had started with a skinny mini for my gardening planner it was a tiny little thing quickly realized after a month or two that it was way too tiny for what i wanted it uh, for so i switched to a skinny a classic skinny planner and that was perfect loved it i used it up i used like every single page in it i was really happy with it um, and throughout the year, I felt like it was just too small. I felt like I needed more space. And so at the beginning of the year, 2022, I decided to just go, um, to level up and get into a classic sized planner for my garden. And so I picked up, um, an undated vertical planner. I think it was called the sweet succulents planner. It was, it was cute. It had some succulents on the cover. And I was like, this is gonna be my perfect gardening planner. And it was amazing um, up until <laughs> I moved. I actually moved at the end of 2021. And so I had to break down my entire garden at my old house and then try to build it anew in my new house. And the transition was very, very hard. And I also started a new job and I just suddenly, you know, felt like I had no time at all to do anything. And so I haven't really been gardening. I've been trying it, but it's also been a huge adjustment to set up my garden in my new house because the soil here is really, uh, it's really bad. The soil here is really like just full of clay and there's not much nutrition in it. Um, and so I've been having to kind of set up raised beds and not really use the soil itself. And that's been pretty difficult. So right now I actually have this planner cover from an undated gardener, Happy Planner. It's really cute, really beautiful. Love these sunflowers. It says my garden is my happy place. I put it on these beautiful gold metal discs. The inside cover has um, this map of plant hardiness zones. I live in San Diego, so I'm definitely, you know, 
in a more temperate region. This cover page actually is from that Sweet Succulents Undated Vertical Planner, so it's not from this uh, from this gardening planner. Um, and so what else do I have here? I just have the back of a monthly overview page here. I kind of want to like do something here, but not sure what. This is a, a table that I made earlier this year. And let me just tell you that I have been struggling with my garden. I usually grow things from seed and I don't know whether like the weather wasn't good, wasn't cooperating when I was planting these or whether the seeds that I got just were like, you know, bum seeds or what, but I have been struggling to grow anything. And I would say that I'm pretty good at growing from seed. And so I don't know what, what's happening. Like my, all my lettuce died, like I wasn't able to grow any of it. All my tomatoes, I wasn't able to grow from seed. All my spinach just kind of, just didn't really grow very well. It was kind of runty. My daikon, I only grew one and it was runty. The dill didn't grow. The tomatoes didn't grow. The spinach was runty if it grew. The only things I've been able to grow so far from seed are marigolds, leeks, um, zucchinis, a few, and cucumbers and kale. Oh, and I think I planted some squash at some point and it's kind of growing, I guess. I haven't updated this in a bit. I want to keep updating that. But, um, so we have that there. And then I just have a little, like, sticker, um, storage, uh, packet here with some gardening stickers, a little envelope in case I want to stick any, like, seed packets that I finished in here. I like using those for decorations. A folder with, um, that I got from the gardening accessory pack, really cute. And inside here I just have some recommended planting dates for San Diego. So I have those in there. And then we have my first um, divider. And I'm actually thinking of using these dividers as years. So instead of it being like April or whatever month, I think I'm gonna put 2022 and use treat these as like yearly dividers because I'm definitely not gonna be using a lot of pages in between you know months because I'm using these as basically as monthly pages now. Um, so like I said, uh, this was the first rolling monthly spread that I, that I did. I started it, um, April 18th and then it went, this page goes through to May 8th. So each row is one week and, you know, it's nice because it still corresponds to the Monday through Sunday, um, you know, weekly, uh, layout that we have here at the top. And I really didn't do too much on this on the in these three weeks because I wasn't really keeping up with my planner. I was, you know, working in my garden. I just wasn't writing it down because I was still kind of struggling with figuring out how exactly I wanted to use this. I did, you know, make a note of weather conditions um, this week. I added some stickers here and there, but I was just curious to see how it would look like. So I just set it up. And then this week is uh, May 9th through the 29th. And like I said, uh, each box is one day. And I just use these little number stickers from Simply Gilded to set that up. And because my garden isn't as big as it was last year, because I'm still trying to readjust, adjust myself to this new house, this new backyard, this new soil. And I've also been super busy with work, haven't really been able to do too much gardening. Because because of all those reasons, I just felt like um, the classic sized, you know, normal weekly spread was a little bit too much room for me. And I kept on feeling like I just wasn't filling it up. There was just a lot of like blank pages and pages that just had one sticker on it or like one to do. And sometimes I would just, you know, write one to do, you know, on one day. And it just felt like a waste of space because I wasn't using like the majority of the space on that day. And so I decided to, um, to change it up. But the thing was, I also wanted to stay in the classic sized planner because I felt like I wanted to have that, um, that option to, to, uh, to expand and to have more room in case 
I felt like I needed it. Sometimes I like putting um, photos of all the vegetables I'm growing into here. So I wanted to have the option of like putting photos in here. Sometimes I like um, putting like the empty seed packets that I finished in here as well, just as like a little ephemera. And so I wanted the room to like put photos, put seed packets, put whatever. And I also wanted to like include folders and sticker sheets and like envelopes. And that's something that you really can't do with a skinny classic sized planner. So I wanted to stay in the classic, but I also wanted to kind of be more efficient and effective with my space. And I felt my first idea was to just use like the monthly pages. So just use, um, these guys right here and I thought about it but they're just a little too small for me and also it's really hard to get a good number of these pages because you only get 12 of these pages per planner so you would really need a lot of planners to have like a good collection of these guys so then I thought maybe I could use this weekly um this weekly vertical uh spread and make it into a monthly spread and just treat each box as a day and you know I could only then fit three weeks at the most on a page like this but I figured that you know that would be fine and also I could always switch it up if I decide that I want more space one week or the other I could always kind of like treat um, treat like the first two boxes as a day and then treat like the last row as you know a day by itself if that makes sense so i would have like one week and then two weeks so i could transition this to be like a two week thing um so there was that and i really liked the idea of treating each box as its own day though Especially since like gardening is something that really happens on like on the longer scale of time I felt like it made more sense to kind of take a step back from like the weekly view and like just go up one level and Do this like three weeks at a time view if that makes sense and um, Yeah, I really really liked it. So a couple of things that I've been working on this week I had to pot some time. I had to spray my basils with neem oil. I haven't really been keeping track of um, watering my garden, but I have been doing that. Uh, I bought a tomato plant and I planted it. I needed to transplant some marigolds that were in the little pots. I needed to plant them into the ground and, or into my raised bed. And I also watered the succulents in my garden with some of my fish water. So this is something that I am really proud of. I have two aquariums and I have to do water changes weekly with the aquariums, you know, to get all of that, you know, used dirty water out of the aquariums and give them like some nice clean water. And I don't throw that water away. That water that I take out of my aquariums is the number one fertilizer of life. And so I always am looking, I always look forward to taking out or to doing a water change in my aquariums because it means that my plants are gonna love it. And so I watered my succulents and my garden with the fish water. Thursday, uh, I just made a note that my basils are absolutely popping off. They are so big and beautiful. And um, it's because of fish water. The fish water is the secret. I kind of want to take a photo of them. And um, maybe I'll pop a picture of it here somewhere on the screen so you can see what's going on. And then on Friday, I just made a note that my marigold sprouted a few more flowers and then my cucumber is flowering right now. And then Saturday, I just put this box here in case I wanted to write something. Saturday, I usually do a good amount of gardening work. So I'll write down in here, like whatever um, I want to write down. And um, the things that I like writing down, as you can see, are kind of a mix of like observations and also like to do's like Wednesday, I wanted to transplant my marigolds, so I wrote that. Um, this is a to-do, this is like a checklist, a habit tracker. So it's a mix of like observations as well as to-dos. And then here on the side, I had a couple of um, like weekly to-dos is what I call them. And these are like to-dos that I don't necessarily need to do on a specific date, but that I wanna get them done at some point in this time frame and so i have 
those to do's there on the side. And that's how I've set up my, um, my rolling monthly spread and I'm really happy with it. I feel like it's definitely the, 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 the layout and the format that, um, that I wanted. And so what I basically do with the dividers is I just tape them together. So if I, you know, you can, you can't see obviously cause it's taped together, but if I peel this apart, it would be the, the actual monthly view that in here, but because I don't need that anymore, I just taped it. So you go straight into the weeklies or my rolling monthlies. And then I think I'll continue to like pull pages until, um, you know what, maybe I'll do it by season. Like this will be spring 2022 and then summer 2022. And then each divider will be a season. I really like that actually. I think I'm gonna do that. And so, yeah, so I'll do that by season. And then at some point I switched up, uh, I put in some more uh, dividers or pages from the other undated gardening planner. So like I said, this one that I'm using right now is from the Sweet Succulents um, undated vertical and you can kind of see like the font is a little bit different. There's this little note section on the side, but I also have this undated gardener vertical planner, which is um, the pages are from this guy here. Like the, the pages that I, that these guys are from the planner that I'm using the cover of right now. So the overview is a lot nicer than the one that the Sweet Succulents one has. So the Sweet Succulents planner has um, this, this style of monthly overview, which is really simple. Um, it just says notes and ideas. It has like some space up here, a little note section, a grid section. This is the monthly overview page for this planner. And it's really similar to what we've seen before, except that because this planner is specifically for gardening and a gardener planner, there's like garden motifs on the pages, important dates, gardening ideas, lots of room to write there on the side. This is the monthly view. It's undated, so that's nice. It has some nice gardening motifs. And then it has some pages of gardening projects and to-do lists. So I'm really looking forward to setting that up. And then the weeklies look like this. So I'm gonna continue to use these as rolling monthlies. And um, yeah, so we'll continue to use those um, like that. And so I actually still have like um, dividers or pages from that Sweet Succulents uh planner so this is from the sweet succulent so you can see that it's not gardening specific it's a little bit different in terms of font and like how it's set up but they're both kind of like gardening themed this one just is really specific to gardening and i didn't want to wait until i finished this guy to start getting into this gardening planner so i just kind of interspersed um the, the dividers with each other. So here's another Sweet Succulents uh, monthly. And then, yeah, I think, I don't know if I've added any more. I might add, oh no, yeah, I have some here. So this one is from the Gardener Planner, as you can see. Yeah, and this one is as well, yeah. So I just kind of popped in like some months from both planners to give me this beautiful, perfect customized planner. I, I'm just so inspired by this planner right now and how I've set it up to be this rolling monthly. All right, everyone, I think we're done here. Um, if you're a gardener, let me know what you are currently growing in your garden right now. I would love to know. And thank you so much for tuning in. I will catch you in my next video. Bye.